A very good afternoon, sir, and a very good afternoon to everyone present here today. Honestly, I'd say I'm very nervous right now since I'm sitting right next to <laughs> you, sir. It's quite an honor to have you here. I'm so grateful for you, your presence, for Aspire Meghalaya, because honestly, had it not been for Aspire Meghalaya, we would not be here today. The talents that performed would not be given this platform to perform, and I'm so grateful, sir, that such programs have been organized for us youths. I would honestly be grateful for every little thing that I can see right now, but obviously I won't be mentioning that. That would take too long. And, sir, as we all know, you are a very highly and a very reputable leader. So, sir, my question to you is, how, how did you come this far as a reputable leader when back in your times, programs like Aspire Meghalaya were not quite available. Since for us youths, we're getting leadership skills, soft skills, we're being taught about how to interact, how to communicate, we're given this opportunity to learn about these skills. However, back in your times, such programs were not really quite available. Maybe they might be available, but not quite uh, widespread as they are right now. So sir, how did you manage and what would be your advice for the youths today for a better tomorrow? Yeah, thank you so much uh, for that question. I'll make it very short. Uh, I, uh, of course, uh, uh, there were uh, different opportunities, but yes, the kind of programs that we are seeing today uh, were not there, the kind of scale that uh, I wish it was there at that point in time, which is what made me also want to do all these things because I wanted to give a better platform to the youth. But uh, for me, uh, of course, uh, the experiences that I had in, in, in life, I think they were uh, one of the greatest uh, teachers, I guess, for me. And um, a lot of people feel that uh, because I was son of a great leader, that uh, I was given everything on a silver plate. Uh, that was not entirely true in the sense that, of course, I got uh, opening into uh, political life early. But then my greatest lessons I have learned in life have always been through defeat. I have always been through losses and uh, struggles and uh, governments falling, which made me realize important things that uh, there is no compromise to hard work. You know, trust is very important in life. When you give your word to somebody, you should not break your word. I think these are very simple things that Everybody tells you, but uh, for me, the, those challenges that I went through when I lost my elections and I got a chance to think back at to, as to what I did wrong, I lost. I was very down for months, but then I picked up myself. I changed myself. I improved myself. And uh, that was something I feel has really helped me. So losses were really great for me. I, every defeat I had was a great opportunity to look back and learn. And even today, whenever I face challenges, I, I don't look at this as challenges. It just, it's another phase for me. I just sit back, look at it, try to think of what I could do to improve things and move forward. And I think that's very important in life. Second, of course, um, I had great mentors. So obviously, Mr. P.S. Sangma, late P.S. Sangma, who's my father, he was a great mentor to me. And um, small, small uh, things he used to teach me. And we used to have call, very casual conversations uh, which uh, at that point in time felt very casual in the sense that we used to, he used to tell me something while having food or, uh, you know, having a cup of tea. And I used to think of it, you know, again, he's giving me a lecture. But then now when I look back at those things and I remember those, uh, you know, points he used to tell me, they were one of the best advisors that I could uh, get at that point in time. And even today, they in fact are applicable to whatever I do. So yes, uh, these are the two, three things for me, but uh, of course, uh, I hope that uh, programs like Aspire and what I saw in my uh, younger days on how I uh, could not get the kind of support that I would want, like for example, as a businessman, I was an entrepreneur. You know, I wanted uh, support from training point of view, from finance point of view, but there were no programs that time. And that's why I started the, uh, you know, the uh, entire Prime program, which is a, a, a entrepreneurship program and so on and so forth. So everything I experienced, which I, did not get help in. I thought that, well, I'm getting an opportunity. God has given me this opportunity to make this difference. 
and I will do whatever I can to make the difference. So, so that's how it has been for me. And in short, yeah, that's the reply to your question. Thank you so much, sir. That was um, that really struck a chord with me. Honestly, I'd say that I have. Well, I won't say it's a similar experience, but I have a grandfather as well, and honestly, he was my pillar. He still is. And as you were speaking about your experiences and with your father, that just gave me a little glimpse of you know my own memories with my own grandfather. He honestly would. Um, he was a great. You know, he, w he loved talking about politics, and to be honest, he taught me a lot as well. And <laughs> that was the reason why I was so excited to, you know, meet you in person. So are you going to contest elections this time? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I got the chance. What's your age? I'm 14. No, you're not allowed. <laughs> uh, well, maybe we'll wait till I'm 25. Oh, no. What's it? Yeah, 25. Yeah. That's good. So that's great. Great. So, um, well, this is uh, related to the current issues, and that is the emotional and mental well-being of youths these days is not doing so good considering the post-pandemic uh, post stress and, you know, the academic stress as well as other factors. However, we don't really have professional mental health awareness and mental health facilities yet, so what would be your solution to this issue? Uh, yes, you're absolutely right that um, this is in fact a very, very big challenge and uh, sometimes as a society also, we tend to overlook uh, mental health and emotional health and sometimes, um, you know, for us as a state and as a nation, we, uh, we don't realize this, but if you look at in most of the developed nations, uh, you know, this, the importance that's, and the stress that's put on emotional and mental health is, is huge. Recently, our Honorable Health Minister has come out with different programs and policies on this, and there was a big program we had where he had announced many programs. So, uh, you know, the entire process of what we are doing now in a small way in, in Aspire, uh, we are going to be having a lot of these kind of different uh, uh, youth centers that we are creating throughout the state. Uh, and uh, these are going to be centers which will be combination of skill, of Aspire, of the Prime program, and many other programs that are there. And uh, even in these centers, you know, counseling uh, is going to play a very, very important role. So therefore, uh, this is very critical. At the same time, we also realize that uh, it's not just about, you know, uh, the counseling that you get in a professional way. Parents play a very important role. Uh, you know, your friends play a very important role. Teachers play a very important role. So it's important that some kind of a counseling or a training has to be even given, even at that level, to be able to know and understand and find out when a child is going through emotional stress and mental stress and to be able to identify that and be able to take action. So uh, these processes have started, but yes, there's a long way to go. And uh, only now, you know, our country and the state has uh, realized that uh, we need to stress on aspects like these, but uh, uh, it's a very well point, uh, you know, that we have taken. And um, as I said, we are working on this, but there's a long way to go in this. Thank you so much, sir. Kabangan kran menta kadei, kabangan kli api menta kadei. Shpang niyo e ba kani ka aspire megalaya ka ka kasay yakitalan giba buon ba ngipen iya kitalan jungi kumno ngile kumno ngi kumno ba kikna ngipen i ba niyo e ru ba ngite mi kijing tem kasi niyo e ba napo penus lang hindi niya remix to e ba pen iya kijing tem kasi ba niyo e ru ba kani kijing tem kasi jungi kalas dang ja menta umdan shu ba ken mau. Tang buat tang kendiat eh, kira nang bantem, bat kira tip ru, bat kim das ngup tenat nes ngup iat shu, ban kumdo kumdo ban praktis nes kumdo ban ban nang bantem. Ngah ngamut ban kelia pi kumdo ka government kan kan le ban bagi beriu kin kira sedang no ban kian mau lene ban ban nang ban tem om tang ban kian mau re ban nang ru ban tem ba. Bagani ka ban bagan long ru om tang bagan long tang ban shukin mau re bag bagi bagani ka kasab ka bagi don kan long ka kam na kabenta jungki. Yeah, in fact, culture and especially music is of course a very critical part of who we are and defines us. In the recent past, you know, we have now started financially supporting. Uh, all types of musicians, whether it's the traditional musicians uh, from the cultural aspect, 
or whether if it's uh, modern, the music and uh, even the classical music that is there. And uh, one of the greatest, uh, I guess, examples of that is this uh, program which we call Grassroots Program, where we are actually supporting and giving financial help to artists who have been performing all this while, but they don't get the stage. So we pay the money to them. We say that, go ahead, perform. And these are performance, pro performances taking place in different tourist destinations, uh, important locations. And uh, the tourists can enjoy the music. At the same time, the uh, musicians are getting the financial support. And uh, you know, through this, we are able to get a much better overall scenario for musicians uh, at large. When it comes to, of course, uh, special programs for traditional and cultural music, all kinds of supports when it comes to instruments, when it comes to different kind of cultural uh, you know, programs they would li like to have, government is giving support to them from time to time. And different organizations have uh, come forward to us and asked us for the support. And uh, we have uh, ensured that every kind of financial support in terms of uh, instruments or in terms of programs that they would like to have the government of Meghalaya is supporting them and will continue to support and make it even bigger. bigger. Uh, the, the program we had of the Tri Hills Ensemble also, which was held uh, just last week, uh, is another very great example of how we are allowing that platform for cultural aspects. So it's not just music, it's uh, the dress, it's the food, it's everything uh, that is there. Uh, today also, I'm, I'm happy to tell you that I'm wearing this Vindya shirt. This is, of course, as part of my steps to always promote and use our own products uh, as much as possible. This scarf is a, is a Raba scarf that I'm wearing. Again, I didn't intend to speak about it, just so happens that I was wearing it. But uh, it, I do it intentionally, of course, whenever I go, I make sure that I wear our own, our own uh, products so that uh, we can promote them. Yes. So therefore, uh, we do things in small ways. I would ask you all to also start to do this in small ways to be able to promote our own uh, culture and our own uh, different, um, uh, you know, uh, beliefs and uh, our, f our food, our music, as well as our clothing. So uh, it's a great uh, question and great suggestion. And as I said, we already are doing a lot of things and we will continue to do it even in a bigger manner. A very good morning, sir, and to everyone present here. Uh, first of all, I'm a very big fan of yours and um, I can't believe you're sitting in front of me right now. Uh, every time I see you on TV, I ask myself a question where when will I get to see you, when will I get to meet you? But thank you, Aspire Meghalaya, for giving us the opportunity. Uh, my, my first question to you is, um, if you were not the Chief Minister of Meghalaya, which career would you have pursued? Uh, I, that's really tough. I don't think I would be good at anything. So uh, I don't know what I would be doing. But, um, uh, I have always um, had a kind of a passion from a childhood uh, and that, as I said, uh, my father has a lot to do with that, to really work with people and uh, to do whatever I can to, to help, to support. Uh, so I think uh, if you had asked me this question 30 years back, the answer would be something else. If you had asked me 20 years back, it would be something else. So it keeps changing for me and I'm sure it does for everybody. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think uh, now at this point in time in life, if I was uh, not in politics, then I would be in some kind of a social work, I guess, something to do with uh, more with uh, youth programs. Maybe I would be an Aspire, I don't know. <laughs> I think, I, think I, would, I would love to, see if, if some chief minister has brought an Aspire program, I would say I want to be part of this program. If, uh, if somebody had brought a program for supporting entrepreneurs, I would say I want to be, a pro I want to be part of this program. If somebody would tell me that, uh, you know, let's do something for the farmers, let's do something for the environment, uh, let's do something for the women, uh, maybe I would be part of those organizations. So I think I would be doing something uh, more socially impactful uh, because I, I'm, you know, I truly believe that uh, there has to be something beyond a certain personal agenda of every individual where you should be able to make a difference in other people's lives, people who are not as fortunate as you, who are, may not have the kind of opportunities that you have. And I think uh, no matter which position you're in, whether you're in politics or you're a government servant or you're a doctor or a teacher or anybody, I think you always have the chance to do something for the people who are not as privileged as you. So I, I think I would be in one of these programs doing something, something I don't know what, but uh, 
I can't think about it because I've been always in politics. But yeah, I, I think uh, that sense of satisfaction would not be there if I were not in uh, some kind of a social work, uh, some kind of programs, which I have started now. Uh, uh, I think I would be doing something in those lines. Thank you.